Mmm, smells old. I wonder what it could be. Oh my goodness, look at this. Look at this. It's a Sinclair Pocket Television. Sent to us by Michael Davis. Thank you very, very much, Michael. It's going to be really cool to have a look inside this thing. I wonder if it works. It's got a power port on the side of it here. And I found the appropriate little DC barrel jack that fits that port perfectly. Let's go ahead, wire up a cable and see if this little beauty powers up. So having done a little research online, this is a negative center pin, which is really quite interesting. It sort of defies all convention. So first of all, we need to establish which of these two pins here, there we go, that one, that is the center pin. We'll keep that center pin towards us and we will make sure that we wire the negative to that side and the positive to the other side. I'm sure that Sinclair TV has got some kind of diode protection in it, but uh, just to be safe, we'll make sure that we wire it up the right way around. So let's plug in the battery powered soldering iron. Here she is, boom, heating up nicely. And let's go ahead and solder these cables up. Right then, the important thing is to make sure that we're at five volts. So apparently this takes five volts at a couple of amps. In fact, <laughs> that said, you could almost power it from a USB device, couldn't you? That would be quite interesting. Okay, so negative on first. Positive. Let's make sure it's turned off at the switch. Yes, it appears to be turned off at the switch. Positive on second. And let's turn it on and the switch and see what happens. Oh my goodness. Ha! Ah. Listen to that. Let me just turn the volume down. Whoops. <laughs> So it's working, which is great news. Um, after a fashion, if you're seeing the screen roll, uh, that's down to the camera frame rate versus the uh, Sinclair refresh rate on the screen. So I needed to adjust my camera settings uh, or my light settings in order to show you a clearer picture of the screen. But we can definitely hear noise coming from the speaker and we can definitely see a picture on the screen. So let's get the camera set up properly so you can see that more clearly. I don't know if you can see that any better now. I'm just going through the, the, the tuning. There's clearly... <laughs> I'll turn it off for a minute. So it's quite interesting, really. I've spent some time tuning around the bands. Um, and clearly there was nothing to see because there are no analog broadcast frequencies actually broadcasting analog TV anymore. But there's just some things about this little Sinclair Pocket TV that really just bring a smile to your face. The antenna, the way the antenna unfolds. There it is. The fact that it is black, it's all anodized or painted black. Just magnificent looking and it suits the look of the Sinclair Pocket TV. TVs of the old days were enormous and had valves inside them and all that kind of good stuff. But um, yeah, this one, this one, well, you know, fully transistorized, couple of microchips in there, and it still has a CRT device inside of it. Why don't we pop it open and have a look inside it. It's 
So having a look underneath the stand, there's a little flip up stand and it's still in great nick. There's a warranty seal here for the FTV1 slash C. That makes life a little bit interesting. It's a shame to pull this off, but we're gonna to have to, I believe, take this seal off because I believe there's a screw still under here somewhere to be able to get into this. Having removed some of the screws, we've now, <laughs> we've now got access to these two terminals on the back here, which apparently uh, were for a Polaroid battery or a battery that was manufactured by Polaroid for their Polaroid cameras. And that would slide into this slot down the side of the Pocket TV and it would power the Pocket TV for about 15 hours. And they were sold in packs of three. That's quite interesting. And then we've now been able to gain access to that tiny little screw there underneath the warranty label, which means that we can get the lid off. Let's have a look inside. Oh, there we go. Oh, 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 look at that. So this is actually a CRT. This is a cathode ray tube right here, which is really quite impressive. I wonder, can we get this PCB out of, yes we can, it looks like it's gonna pop out. There we go, just a plastic screen, we'll get that out of the way. My goodness, look at that. Look at that, absolutely magnificent. So let's get into a bit of the detail about how this works. On the right hand side here then, we've got a little tiny speaker fantastic we've got the crt itself and this works in a very different way than most crts in fact so there's an electron beam that's directed through a series of electrodes here high voltage electrodes and what those electrodes do is they bend that beam around and they deflect it onto that phosphor screen that you can see at the back of the glass in this display and on the front sheet of this glass here is something quite special so where I'm actually tapping my screwdriver at the moment there's a metallic substrate which has been printed onto the glass which is charged in such a way that it pushes that electron beam down onto the display itself. Another thing that's really interesting about these, they operate at about 20 kilovolts, and we're only shoving five volts into this tiny little connector at the bottom here. So ultimately what happens is the five volts that comes in here goes into um, a high frequency oscillator and a little tiny transformer, and then it gets pushed through this series of capacitors and diodes at the top here to multiply the voltage out to different voltage levels for the CRT. And I think there's a five a five kilovolt section, a 10 kilovolt section, and then a 20 kilovolt section. So you've got to be a little bit careful. This, this CRT might still be charged. <laughs> Could end up getting an electric shock. Um, but yeah, it's really quite interesting. So there's only one chip in, in this entire system. Everything else is transistors and discrete components. What a magnificent piece of equipment this really is. What a fantastic design it is. So the interesting thing is, is while Sinclair and his team were working on this magnificent feat of engineering, in the background, Casio and various others were working on LCD displays. And those LCD displays, as we all know, were much more efficient uh, and much easier to cram into a small television. But what a cool invention. What an absolutely incredible beast of a machine. And then let's have a look at the reverse of the PCB. So everything is plated through hole on this PCB. There's no surface mount chips on this at all, uh, obviously, because surface mount wasn't invented back in the day. But this little TV here is an absolutely pristine version. When you look at this cathode ray tube here, which is the core of the design of this wonderful little Sinclair Pocket TV, you've got the emitter here, um, and, and obviously this is a complete vacuum inside this glass. You've got an emitter here which generates the beam, and then what you've got, you can see here and here, the beam will feed through these electrodes, these two plates here, 
It'll get bent in one direction and the other, and effectively it builds a picture by very quickly scanning, or raster scanning, across that display, that phosphorus display. So the so when you turn this over then, in the direction and the position of the beam is controlled by all of those electrodes inside that CRT glass tube, inside that vacuum tube, and the beam scans across from top to bottom like that, scans across from top to bottom, and it just repeats that process there and draws a picture on that phosphorus back screen absolutely magnificent one thing that i've just noticed that i think is quite important to show you the actual display when you look at the display it's a different size from the glass display here that's because the glass display has a fresnel lens in it or a fresnel lens which is ultimately like a special sort of flat magnifying glass and that's how they get out of this sort of landscape 16 by 9 type display and turn it into the more traditional old-fashioned tv 4x3 type format how cool is that right i think it's time to put this back together and put it on the shelf and admire it for what it is i certainly don't want to break this what an absolute beauty of a piece of kit and thank you michael davies for sending this into us really really appreciate it as always make sure you give us a good old thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you in the next video take care peeps bye for now